Ooh, that was kind of nice. Welcome everyone, this is Dom, and this is another episode of Kerbal Realism. Today we are orbiting the moon with Jeb in the hot seat, and we are... Yeah, that's it, we're orbiting the moon. <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and grab this, put this stuff back up. I actually have another node plan to return him home. I just completed two contracts, which were perform visual surveys and perform visual surveys, which were basically orbit the moon, take a crew report, uh, orbit the moon, take a crew report. There was one here, and there was one there. And uh, they were very, very boring, so I chose not to record. Uh, so we are going to go back home. Uh, we're going to do the re-entry. We'll actually keep that in the footage this time around. And uh, we'll figure out what else we're going to do. I needed to do this so I had enough monies to do our next mission. So, uh, yeah, I unlocked a lot of parts from our last venture to the moon. So uh, we might be doing something that isn't moon-related this time. I will see you guys at re-entry. And welcome back to Kerbin, guys. Well, at least the parts that want to load up of Kerbin. There's some weird sharp contrast there. I have no idea what's going on. Um, maybe when we get closer, it'll load up. Uh, I have no idea what's going on, though, but Jeb seems happy. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, we are approaching Kerbin. Uh, the sun is behind us and the moon as well. I kind of reduced my speed down as best as I could to get uh, the least impact from the atmosphere. So what we're going to do is actually eject our bottom stage there. Boop, boop. Um, and then the this bottom stage here is actually attached uh, with a double decoupler system with a heat shield. So we can hopefully use stage recovery to get rid of that, uh, or at least help us get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is just point straight up and uh, just kind of... Oops, let's get rid of these, move these uh, parachutes to a node on their own. A stage recovery should, in quotes, should uh, <laughs> recover this. There it is. There's the, there's curve in there. Earth. I just said Earth in my mind. Uh, should recover this bottom stage for us because it has ample parachutes. So, uh, and there's a bunch of science that I wanted to recover on it. So a science junior and two used mystery goo containers, which are just, you know, getting science around uh, the moon. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Boom. I love that sound. So there's a heat shield. Uh, because it's re-entering the atmosphere, uh, and it might re-enter the atmosphere out of our view, that's why I put it there. Uh, so, and, well, another reason why I also I pointed straight up is so that I don't hit any of these parts upon re-entry. Uh, so we are going to get ourselves oriented towards the retrograde here and speed up so we hit the atmosphere. Uh, and this guy should make his merry way to the ground, hopefully in one piece. You will have to see, though. Uh, come on. You'll make it. Uh, we'll see if stage recovery likes that or not. And I tried to land in the light. I'm not sure how well it's going to work, but I didn't have enough fuel to or time left on the uh, re-entry here for Jeb, because we only have 18 minutes of fuel and oxygen left, so... Or 19 minutes left. Okay. Let's turn off our SAS there. He should jump off into oblivion. And we should re-enter, hopefully unscathed. Ah, so pretty. Let's see what the IVA looks like. Yep, scary. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh... Something bad happened. Oh, those are the two stages. Cool. So stage curve, we did get our stages there. Uh, one of our stages. And we got uh, 25. Do, do, do. So we got a lot of science from that stuff. I don't know if we got all the science because we recovered it with stage recovery, but it doesn't matter for me. Some science helps. And these are just the decouplers. Uh, these messages here. Cool. And we are just going to crash off the coast here of this peninsula, which looks just like Florida. It's like, this is Florida. <laughs> uh, where are the keys? Where's Cuba? Oh, there's Cuba. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Slow ourselves down, and then deploy parachute. Deploy parachute, thank you. Uh, 
and that should get us to the ground safely. Ah, excellent. Cool. We're back. And Jeb got no XP. Darn it. That was actually the reason I chose him. Uh, see if he would go and get some XP on that mission. But he did not. I uh, got a little bit of, of science for the vessel itself and etc. etc. Cool. 603 science and almost 400,000 monies to spend. I spent most of the monies lap from last episode uh, unlocking all the parts in every single one of these nodes. Uh, for future use. But what I really want to get is the Communicotron right there. Communotron. Yeah, 32. Uh, that's what I really want to get soon. Um, but I'm not sure if we want to do that this episode. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put together another mission for us to complete this episode, or at least start this episode. And I will see you there. And welcome back, guys, to the launch pad. And we are witnessing a solar eclipse right now. I was actually fast forwarding time so that we'd have a nice early morning day launch and I saw the moon come over the horizon first and I'm like oh wait is this gonna happen? So I fast forwarded a little bit more to kind of get that that view going on. Oh it's so cool. I love this game. Love this game. Um, there we go. Ooh, there we go. That's what I wanted. I hit the wrong button. Hit the wrong button. Uh, okay so this is what I'm calling uh, the Kerbin Station 1, uh, this is going to be an orbital uh, station uh, around Kerbin, uh, and we're trying to complete this contract right here, build a new orbital station around Kerbin. Uh, we have to have a station that has power and an antenna and a docking port, and that's all within the, what I'm calling the potato on the stick. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, let's go ahead and take this thing off. Here we go, three, two, one, go! <laughs> So, uh, I've been testing out flying this rocket uh, for just a little bit of time now. Uh, I haven't really... I've been making a few modifications just to make sure that we get up into orbit just fine and uh, efficiently. I am going to be losing a lot of money on this contract, if I remember correctly. Um, so what I ended up doing is putting parachutes on some of these sta on these stages here so I can recover them. Just so I can make about, let's see, 40 grand back or 20 grand back. Uh, while uh, you know, in the process of doing this. So there goes the first stage. This is all automatic using smart parts, uh, which is one of my favorite mods ever, ever, ever. Uh, all of the staging is done automatically. I'm gonna tip over ever so slightly now. Here we go. Uh, this is not the most efficient launch profile. I've actually gotten up to orbit uh, with about an extra 200 meters per second of delta V left uh, from this exact payload. Uh, with this exact setup, but I ended up tumbling uh, one one test launch. I ended up tumbling, and I, uh, I'm not going to do that again, especially not while I'm trying to get Bill and Jeb up there uh, very uh, safely. I don't want to tumble this thing through the atmosphere on the way up. So this uh, secondary boosters will be releasing in eight seconds. Uh, they'll automatically be shoved off the ship. Three, two, one... Oops. There they go. And everything should be now recovered. Uh, we are left with a very, very low thrust to weight ratio right here, but it is plenty enough to get us into orbit where we want to be. Uh, we're going to do a nice low Kerbal. Wow. Wow, that's an amazing view. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so we're going to be in a very low Kerbal orbit. Uh, we're looking, Kerbin orbit, whatever, uh, <laughs> we're looking for just around 72 kilometers, uh, just so it makes it easier for us to bring things up to the station, for example, uh, in the near future. Uh, I'm just putting myself on prograde now, and the, uh, ship is basically flying itself up to orbit. Uh, the fairing walls will come off very, very soon, so it won't look like a big potato on a stick anymore. Um, wow, that is so cool. Um, 
I did all the test launches at night, so looking at this thing fly is even more cumbersome than what it was uh, in the test flights. Oh man. So yeah. Um, yeah. So the station is all within here, or, or the the beginnings of the station, the the basic parts from uh, Umber Space Industries, the uh, OKS Co Colony Command Center is in here, uh, and we'll get to see that in a few minutes as long as we get up to the right orbit that we want to get. So I am throttling down for now, um, and uh, we'll just slowly uh, leak the throttle on uh, in a minute. But for now, uh, as we approach the 68 kilometer mark, that's what I have set uh, one of these smart parts things to right here. It's set to 68 kilometers to trigger the uh, fairing walls there to be deployed, or jettisoned, whatever the word I'm looking for is. I'm just going to turn the engine back on for a little bit. Uh, well, our Apple Apps will grow. There goes the fairings. That's so cool. Um, Apple Apps will glow, grow slightly, uh, and I'll actually throttle down for now. Uh, get a little bit closer to our Apple Apps now. I want to get within about 10 seconds before I start throttling back up again. And oop, I can't get that for some reason. There we go. Extend panels. And I'm just going to punch. So punching the throttle, I'm going to take it off of prograde and maintain our time to Apple Apps. Now I know this isn't the best way to do this uh, profile launch. Uh, you probably we could have probably done a, a, a shallower angle or yeah uh, of ascent, and we would have moved our Apple Apps uh, further away from us, and then done a slow burn the entire way up if we wanted to, uh, but. We ended up not doing that. Now, because of the eclipse, the solar panels are not directing themselves towards the sun, which is really, really cool, I think. I've been in one eclipse before, and that happened then. I was like, oh, wow, that's amazing. I actually might have been on camera for that one, too. So I'm trying to maintain timed apple apps just above, uh, you know, a few seconds, uh, move myself back kind of towards uh, the horizon there myself away now. Only a second or two away from it. It's an efficient burn to uh, do not, uh, you don't want to really increase your, your Apple apps anymore. I'd rather not be around 73 kilometers. Uh, I'd rather be low. Uh, and it will bring up my peri apps on the other side of the planet. Okay. I know I move the camera a lot. That's something that I've noticed in my videos. I tend to move the camera quite a lot. I'm going to explain all the parts in a minute, I just want to make sure that I get myself in a good, stable spot for uh, intercepting in the future. Now this ship doesn't have any uh, RCS built onto it, uh, so what I'm going to do is rely on the, um, what is this thing called, the SAS module there, uh, advanced stability control to hold it in place and uh, we will dock to it. Uh, we will match the speed of it, and uh, we'll bring up another pod or something to bring Jeb and Bill home. But for now, they actually have quite a lot of uh, availability of resources, and I'll explain why in a second. My first iteration of this was to actually have power generation on here without having uh, solar panels or radiators. Uh, I was going to use the Carbonite uh, mod to satisfy that. But I figured out that the collector that I was using to collect carbonite from the upper atmosphere here, external atmosphere here, was not getting enough carbonite to uh, power the generator. It was actually using more electricity collecting the matter than burning it. Let's get over. I'm just trying to feather the throttle on and off uh, while pointing prograde to bring my periaps to just about the same as my apple apps because right now we are in basically a perfect orbit perfect awesome so uh, that is that what i'm going to do is actually turn the flight computer on and then we will go to positive normal now the reason why i do this well, there's quite a few reasons why i do this uh first reason being uh in this position the solar panels at the top of the ship here will always be oriented well will always have a clear view of the sun. Uh, that's mostly the biggest reason why I do it. Uh, if there was anything horizontally uh, in the way, uh, or if we were facing any other direction, the ship might get in the way or anything like that. So right now they're at the very, very top of the ship, and they will always have sun in them. 
as the moon moves away. Now, the other reason is for this. I like this thing. The Space Donut. <laughs> this is a OKS habitation ring, so orbital kerbal station or whatever they call it. Uh, it's part of the MKS OKS mod, and it allows for, I think, 12 kerbals to be on the ship at a time. Uh, and that will satisfy our contract. Our contract was to make it so that, I think, 5 kerbals could last on the ship. Uh, this supports 2, this supports 12, and this is a storage tank. This storage tank is full of oxygen, water, and food for two Kerbals to last just about 338 Kerbal days, which is absolutely awesome. Um, and having the electricity from the sun like this, uh, we should be able to last uh, that much uh, time just off of electricity and the food here. Now, if I were to get rid of one of these guys, which we might do very, very soon in the next episode... For example, Bill might go home, or Jeb actually might go home, and we'll leave Bill up here to run the station, since he is the engineer. Uh, we uh, can bring him home, and then the stats will increase, because there will only be half the consumption. What we need to do is eventually bring up more modules uh, that will click in and be controlled by the Colony Control Center to basically um, control and produce things such as food, water, and oxygen. Now, one of my biggest limiting factors right now is actually storage of waste. Um, if we can zoom out, hopefully that works. No, let's just do this. Uh, no point to zoom out then. Uh, we have no waste disposal uh, system, so there's no way to get rid of carbon dioxide, the waste physically, like their poop, uh, from the Kerbals here, and waste water that they're consuming and, of course, peeing out. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, that's going to be future episodes. We'll add a couple of attachments here. So what I'm going to do, since I'm in a decent orbit, um, and I don't mind uh, moving uh, moving this, we're actually going to... Um, I don't know if I'm going to get rid of this yet. I think what I'm going to try to do... Oh, that was bad. I accidentally accelerated. Um, what I think I'm going to try to do is bring something that I can stick onto the side here, um, and actually can control it and deorbit it. So what I want to do is a couple of EVAs with these guys and maintain this colony uh, in space. <laughs> uh, that's going to be it, though, guys. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.